everybody. Jim here in Akiba right now. Actually on my way to Super Potato because tonight uh, I'm going to do something a little different. Uh, kind of copying a friend of mine. A guy by the name of Scruffy Looking RGB. He does a series of videos. He calls his 500 Yen Challenge where he'll go to a book off or a hard off or something similar and see what the best game he can find for 500 yen is or about five bucks uh, but since I'm gonna be going to super potato I'm gonna step that up uh, to a thousand yen because um, they do have some games here that you can buy for like 500 yen or less but uh, I want a little more wiggle room I guess so we are gonna do a uh, thousand yen roughly ten bucks Japanese so if we can find something good in super potato for 10 bucks or less uh, We're gonna take it. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're only gonna focus on stuff. You can buy for a tenner uh, so let's get inside and See what we can find for nothing and by the way, that's the max I'm gonna spend It's a thousand yen and no more so uh, let's go up to the third floor and See what we can find Alright. Super Potato once again to uh pick up something cheap today. So I'm gonna do my best to actually put the exchange rates on the screen, but we're getting started. All these loose Famicom carts, we're bypassing the uh, box stuff. But we have lots of stuff here that can be picked up for a thousand yen or less. A lot of the Dragon Quest and Final Fantasies. Atlantis no Nazo, Secret of Atlantis for 528. That's cheap. The max you can see in front of it is 638, so they won't go above that. So 748 for Fantasy Zone, which is very cool, at max 858. So if you see it for less than the little tab in front, that means there might be like some label damage or something like that, so they take a little bit off. So uh, as you can see, we got, you know, Superman, Don Doko Don, the various things, Space Invaders, stuff like that, all very cheap. Uh, the Captain Tsubasa games, those are all under a thousand yen, and those are pretty fun too. And then some of the, uh, what's it, Knights of the, the Zodiac, Saint Seiya, all that stuff is uh, pretty cheap as well. And we come to some Konami goodness, so we got Goonies and Goonies 2, they're 858 max. Uh, which is, uh, pretty good. Those are some fun adventure games, but again, they're very abundant. Gambari Goemon, Gambari Goemon 2 though. Uh, 1298 so that's over our set budget for today unfortunately so some of these Konami games are uh, a little over a thousand yen but like penguin adventure 748 because some somebody wrote their name on it long ago uh, well that's pretty good 748 uh, 528 max 418 right here for this copy of ER kung fu it's always uh, a fun little distraction uh, 748 for Tiny Toon Adventures by Konami. That is actually a really good uh, platformer. Very Mario-esque. King Kong and Astro Boy. All this stuff is like, you know, five bucks. And then this stuff, Rockman 4 for 858, Rockman 5 for 858, Rockman 3 for 968. So Rockmans 3, 4, and 5 are all like eight or nine bucks way, way cheaper than their NES counterparts. So that's really cool. Uh, some stuff not so cheap for whatever reason. The Twinbee games though, uh, these are fine. So like the original Twinbee, we'll see right here. Uh, 968 for Twinbee, AKA Stinger, I believe. And 968 for Twinbee 3. So uh, both of these Twinbee games on Famicom, uh, those are pretty cheap. And then Gradius for 858, which is great. 
I'm a huge fan of Gradius, pretty much on anything, so yeah. Uh, 858 for Famicom Gradius. I do believe I will. Uh, 748 for Hinotori. I, I don't think Hinotori got a release outside of Japan. It's like, uh, I believe a side-scrolling action platformer, if memory serves me correctly. As we carry on to some more loose cards. We have all these Dragon Ball games. We've got 418 for the original Dragon Ball, which was released as Dragon Power on the NES, I believe. So you can pick it up for like four bucks. So that is pretty nice. But all of the Dragon Ball games are like between four and seven bucks. They're really cheap. Uh, and some Technos Japan games. Um, we uh, Double Dragon 3 is uh, just over the thousand yen mark. 858 though for, um, I forget the full title of this one, but that's one of the Kunio Kun games that was not released outside of Japan. Uh, 1078 for uh, the uh, 2 on 2 Kunio Fighter, but uh, this copy here of River City Ransom, the label is just a little faded, so it's 968. So you can actually pick up Downtown Neketsu Monogatari, which is basically the Famicom River City Ransom. Uh, you can pick that up for under a thousand yen, so that's very nice. Also, Super Dodgeball for 858, that's great. And then 528 Max for Neketsu Hockey Boo, which is another great game, as well as the Famicom versions of Nintendo World Cup and Crash and the Boy Street Challenge. A lot of that Technos Japan stuff, the Kunio Kun games, they're very abundant, so they're all pretty cheap, usually between like five and ten bucks. So we got some other uh, good stuff here. Some of the Hudson stuff, like uh, Adventure Island. Those aren't so expensive. And Star Soldier, which is a good old school shooter. 638 for Star Soldier. That's pretty good. And then a lot of this first party Nintendo stuff. Uh, 858 for Mario Brothers. That's in the vicinity of like 850. 748 for Mario 3. That's not much more than seven bucks. Um, which, you know, I'd like to see it at five, maybe, but it's not, uh, insanity, you know what I mean? I've seen NES carts of Mario 3 for, like, 20 bucks, 25, which is kind of silly. But we got some more of this Nintendo first-party stuff, the, your Donkey Kongs and all that, these Jaja Maru games and Ninja Kun, this is all super cheap stuff, uh, between, uh, five and ten bucks at, at, uh, at best, Super Star Force for 418. It's another good old school shooter by Tecmo. So that's all really good. Ah, the Famicom Disk, which is uh, also, you know, really cool if you have a Famicom Disk system or a twin Famicom. Uh, only a handful of these games are going to be under a thousand yen, though. Most of them are going to be uh, somewhere over 20 bucks. But, um, yeah, but anyway, I'm not here for Famicom Disk. I don't even have my twin Famicom anymore. Uh, but, uh, it's, you know, nice to peruse them every once in a while. And, uh, here's all the boxed stuff, which again, for the, uh, purposes of today's video, I didn't, re uh, go through, because you're not gonna find very many boxed Famicom games for under ten bucks, and, uh, ooh, don't even think about it, Saturn. Naughty Jungle of Love, Saturn. You're naughty. All your games are expensive, but I can't not look. Although we could pick up Christmas Nights. Christmas Nights is 638. Very nice. Uh, but I believe <laughs> that's probably that'd probably be the only game on the Saturn you could pick up for uh, under a thousand yen. So don't even think about it, buddy. Uh, Super Famicom, though, on the other hand, another console where there is an abundance of loose cards. East 3 for 638. That's awesome. I love me some East 3. Uh, the Dragon Quest games, that's kind of a no-brainer for the most part. Those are going to be cheap, as well as the Final Fantasies. All the RPGs, like we have Seiken Densetsu 2 here and Seiken Densetsu 3. The uh, Secret of Mana games, they're, they're uh, dirt cheap. I've heard some people say that uh, RPGs in Japan it's like sports games in uh, in the in North America, like the Maddens and stuff like that. How they're so cheap, um, but we got some uh, some good stuff here that ain't ain't so expensive. These Ranma games, the Ranma 2D fighters, they're not the best 2D fighters, mind you, um, but you know they're okay. Sailor Moon S, 
and the original Sailor Moon, although that one's not quite so much. And again, the Dragon Ball Z games, except for Hyper Dimension, but all the Super Butoden games, I mean, 528 for Super Butoden 3, 418 for Yu Yu Hakusho 2. Um, a lot of this stuff that is based on really popular anime properties is going to be pretty cheap because, again, that stuff sells like hotcakes, you know? Kids want to have the games based on their favorite anime. And we've got some other good stuff over here. Lots of Konami stuff. Now, a lot of the Capcom and Konami stuff on Super Famicom, for whatever reason, is uh, a bit more expensive. But at the low end, you got like Rockman 7, Rockman X. These are like, you know, in the $8 range. Even Rockman X2 is $9.68. So that's really good. I know those are pretty expensive on the SNES. And moving right along. Uh, Tiny Toon Adventures... Uh, I believe that's Buster Bus Loose, 858 on the Super Famicom. That's real nice. Batman Returns, just over a thousand yen. Uh, but that's a great game as well. Of course, don't even think about Turtles. You will not find Turtles for ten or less. Um, but we got some other good stuff here. The Box Adventure Games. Uh, those are borderline. As is uh, Super Adventure Island. F Zero you can buy for dirt cheap. Star Fox again. Some of this uh, Nintendo first-party stuff, it's a no-brainer. Because uh, it's super, super common. Kirby Superstar, or Super Deluxe, you can get it for like 9 something 638 for Donkey Kong Country. Uh, not so bad, as well as the other Donkey Kongs. Those are all uh, pretty cheap. Like the, the most expensive thing right there was like Super Metroid for about 20 But you get Bonk's Adventure for like 9 Not so bad. Uh, other stuff here, Mario games. Again, you get your Mario Kart, your Super Mario Worlds, all that stuff. You should, you know, always expect to be able to get that for next to nothing. Got some Go-Go Akmans. That's always good. Puyo Puyo. Great battle. So, lots of good stuff here. Lots that's uh, not so expensive. Great Battle 2. That's a fun little beat-em-up with a little chibi Kamen Rider and Gundam and all that. So we've got some uh, pretty good stuff here that's not so expensive. Some platformers, a lot of action stuff. N64 here, which uh, some stuff on it you can buy for, you know, like 858 for Castlevania 64, for example. Goldeneye, expensive for some reason. Um, so there's some stuff you can find on the N64 that ain't so expensive. Most of it is going to be like your first party stuff. Your Zeldas, Bombermans, F-Zero, all this stuff that, um, you know, it's would have sold in great abundance. Uh, but I'm not even, I don't even have a Nintendo 64 at home anymore. Um, but as you can see, yeah, lots of stuff, your Kirby's, your Mario's, again, all that Nintendo first party stuff on your N64, you can pick it up for between five and 10 bucks, most of it. Very cheap. Anyway, uh, I will pick up a game and then we'll go outside and see what I got. So let's do that. Get out of here. Okay, so all done inside of Super Potato. Attempting my 1,000 yen challenge, just spend 1,000 yen and get a decent game. And I think I did. Um, for uh, 638 yen, with no focus on that, uh, I picked up Ebisumaru, uh, Soryuke Ebisumaru for 638 yen. Um, that is a little over six bucks American. I uh, picked it up because I've never played it before. It is a Japan exclusive title and it's a puzzle game set in the Gambari Goemon series, which I like that series a lot. So pretty happy with that for a little over six bucks. Can't go wrong. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed a quick look at some of the cheaper games in Super Potato. And uh, until next time, take care everybody. Goodbye.